Hi sewing friends, welcome to my sewing room. My name is Beth and if you're new, welcome. Today I'm answering a question that was asked last week. How do you figure out what size of fabric to use once the center square is chosen? Is there a general formula? So the quilt block right here had a center square and then I had to figure out how to put the pieces around that center square. So I'm going to try to answer that. I'm going to start at the beginning with some simple blocks. Let's get started. I have a couple books here in my sewing room. This is an old book with the quilt block designs. There are no patterns per se, but they have the picture and the name. And it's fun to thumb through this book and find quilt blocks with the name. And then afterwards, it's a trick to figure out how to put that quilt block together. Here's another book of quilt blocks that are, I refer to often uh, when I'm looking for the name of blocks. It's kind of tricky to look through, but I know some of you have helped me with the names in the past before too, and that helps out. So to um, figure out how to make a quilt block, how, what size it's going to be. Here's a 16 patch and I'm using two and a half inch squares. If I add that two and a half times four, I have four little squares there, what I get is 10. And I know my block is not 10 inches and this is for an unfinished block. This quilt block is called unfinished because it's not in the quilt. So after I get my 10, my 10 inch number there, I need to do a little subtraction. Subtraction, I count the seams. And in this block, there are three seams and all of the seams are a quarter inch. So every seam, in every seam, I lose actually a half an inch because it's a piece, a quarter inch off of each of those blocks. So I count half an inch for each seam and I multiply that times three for this block. And that equals one and a half. So my block is eight and a half inches. Where's a six by six. And again, I'm using two and a half inch squares. So I do a little math. I multiply two and a half times six and then I take away the seams. And in this one, there was one, two, three, four, five seams at half an inch, so that's two and a half inches. So I have a math problem. 15 take away two and a half is 12 and a half inches. This tiny quilt block is using two inch squares and I ended up with a six and a half inch block. There was four times two, and then I took away one and a half inches. So I just have to do little math problems with all of these blocks. Here's a bigger one using half square triangles, and the half square triangles, again, counted uh, four times two and a half and took away the seams. This block uses different squares, but all of those elements are three inches. So the center square is three inches, the hourglass blocks are three inches, and three times three is nine, and all I needed to do was take away one inch. An even bigger block, and these pieces are probably three and a half inches, but I just need to count the seams and do a little subtraction. And in all of these, they are three by three blocks, and here's a four by four block using a lot of half square triangles. So just count the seams. Each seam is a half an inch and take that half an inch away from the total and you'll have what you need. Now here is a block that has that center square that I was asked about, four and a half inches. So the four and a half is my number to start with. Half of four and a half is two and a quarter. And if I'm going to put two little squares next to that four and a half, they need to measure two and a quarter. And I add a quarter inch seam and I get two and a half. So two, two and a half inch squares would work with a four and a half inch bar like this one. 
two little squares with a half an inch seam would work. So I did the problem a little backwards there. I did four and a half plus half, which is the seam, equals five. Divide the five in half and you get two and a half. So I need two two and a half inch squares to match that four and a half inch center. I hope this simple little explanation might explain how to put blocks together when you don't have a pattern. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time.